ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a little history lesson. This beauty right here, this Freedom Bus, that used to be my home. Right here in this very parking lot, back before it was a Freedom Bus, when it was on normal tires, when it just had an American flag spray paint job done by me. I had a bunch of couches, I had my dogs, and we would patrol the lot at night and live right here. It was fantastic. But then the idea for the Freedom Bus was born and we were driving monster trucks and we're all monster gung-ho. We created the monster Freedom Bus. Well, it doesn't stop there. What you're about to watch is the Freedom Bus transformed once again into the ultimate snow machine. Yes, tracks, my friends. It's always the answer. So buckle up, because the Freedom Bus is about to be put on track. Track, get it, jump. Good luck. Good luck. I don't know why I said good luck. plan today. What are we doing today? What, what right this? now we are going to get the telehandler so we can boom out, pick up the tracks, bring it back, make it a lot easier than using the normal forklift. lift. Yeah, but what's the, big, then, what's the big picture here? What do we, what's, big picture, we want to get all four tracks mounted up and do a little test drive in the parking lot, make sure everything's going to work before we take it up on the mountain. Just use the fisherman's knot in the chain. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, oh. <laughs> Easy there. <laughs> Help on this part. Lunch now? <laughs> he tightens this up. How's it look, Alan? Well, looks like uh, my stomach's rumbling pretty good. What's for lunch today? I'm not sure yet. You gonna eat a steak today? It would be nice. Sounds the pretty good. The prices huh? were a little expensive. Uh, Smith didn't have any good sales this week so far. <laughs> Quench it. 
okay? And we don't have to do the whole thing, you can just do this one end right here. Yeah. Then what you do is you take the torch and you go back and forth and you watch the color. And then when it first turns blue, you go a little bit past that. When you hit the second blue, then you stop. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm gonna just make an attempt to uh, sort of uh, so, temper so this uh, Sounds like wrench. you're doing a little science. A little bit. I just I've just watched somebody else do it, and they had a little different steel, but it should be so what are you close to what. Uh, what are you attempting to do here to uh, to the steel? Well, to make it harder but not brittle. So basically, in the middle, sort of like a tool steel grade. So basically, uh, it, so when you grab it, it won't bend right here, but also if you hit it, it don't break. So it's something I watched another person do, and uh, it was a long time ago. I'm gonna attempt it. What's the process here? First, I heat it up red hot, and then quench it. Do you That's have the it? first stage. Do you have a specific temperature or just any? No, any I, red I, hot? no, I want it super hot, as hot as I can get it. Red hot. Sweet. Usually you want to uh, you want to hold it at a temperature for a prolonged period of time, but I don't have really that time. Yeah, because normally on the forging of uh, the tool steel, when they get the tempers and stuff, they first like do a heat process to relieve this any stress that's in it, then you heat it up, and then it's quenched, and then it's usually heated up in the furnace at a specific temperature, depending on the metal for an hour or two at a time, but I don't have oh. hours. It's hard, it's probably almost impossible to see in the camera, but there's a slight blue. That went a little bit over. Is it bad if you go over? Well, it's... You really want to be at a specific temperature for a short period of time. You're trying to get it at a specific temperature for the crystals to grow. So much easier if you have a kiln and you can just set the temperature. But there are like guys that are really good and they will temper different parts of the tool at different hardnesses. So you can have one part soft, one part hard. Same thing with swords. And even like this anvil over here. They will temper the uh, the surface of it like down a quarter inch or a half an inch, but then keep the rest of it uh, untempered. Oh yeah, you can see it. You can see the color change there. Right in there between the red and the light blue, there's a dark blue, mm -hmm. and that's basically the te the temperature that creates that is what you want for this surface right here, and to leave it that way for a while. But as long as I get it there, it's going to be somewhat okay after this. I'm just gonna. Let it cool. Sweet. Back up. Yeah, there you go. You're all back up. Backwards. Reverse. Yeah, Is it still hot? A little bit. Is it hard? How do you test it? <laughs> How do you know? Well, you can try to break it. Maybe we should. Six six. This is a perspective of how big this thing is. Okay, I'm clearing underneath. This thing's huge. We're doing it different every single time, and this time is the hardest, obviously. Bad paint. 
panel is just gonna destroy the paint. Hopefully after this though, it's gonna go smoothly. All right, Rob, what is the plan? Big day, huh? It is big day. We finally got our last missing piece. We got our wheels, so I just got the axle mounted up. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna get these in here. But yeah, this is the last piece of the puzzle and then we are ready to roll. Everybody also says that is not coming off. And get that impact on it, loosen it up. You see what we're doing here? This is the, the piece that holds all the wheels on for these tracks. Well, if you look at the other ones, they're all opposite. So if you put the wheels in here, if you too fall far forward and hit the... I don't know why it ended up that way. It's that way. Probably used to be a rear track or something. Or we've never had it on before, which is another option. So we gotta flip this around. Then the wheels we have over there will mount right up there in the middle. They'll keep the track guided on. Put some tension on it. Bada bing, bada boom, we're ready to roll. Where's your big massive sledgehammer? Yay. Yeah. Don't mask the hat. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think your beard's in the grease. And yeah, we just so. need to, oh, yep, it is. Smell. I'll get that. Oh, jeez. Oh, it was good. Oh, why do you think his beard looks really so good? Yeah. It's good for it. <laughs> no, it's good treatment. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the track assembly, you have the two wheels right in the middle. They're being held on by this. Basically, this goes on, you mount your two center wheels to it, and then your gears are on the outside and your track spins around it. And that's to mainly keep the track on and your guide wheels all the way around. <laughs> Sorry. You all right? Okay. <laughs> and we'll put some of the Can you go in your mouth? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Can you push it towards me a little bit? Me? Yeah. All right. Up here. And then you have to get this side up over here. Another day, another job done. Tracks are on the bus. They're all tight. Everything should be ready to go. Now Alan's gonna fix up the electrical system, make sure it's cooling off. And I think I am safe to say the bus is ready to go to the cabin. Here's the deal. We're up here in the beautiful mountains just above Logan and on the other side of Bear Lake. Uh, and up at the lodge where Heavy D is doing his snowed in series. But we're doing all the prep work right now to get the tracks on the bus. He's just whipping that thing around, bro. Oh, our Listen. tracks, man. <laughs> oh, I hope they make it. It's gonna be all right, I oh, think. It stresses me out. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. We got a lot of work to do. This took a long time getting these things put on um, just back at the shop. So now we are doing it in several feet of snow in a parking lot where we don't have all our equipment. So best of luck, let's do it. We are ready for action. You're the guy with the big guns, huh? Yeah. For now, anyways. I hear you're pretty good with the power tools. We can't get these tracks on by themselves, okay guys? So we got the characters of the show today. I want the 
walk you around. We got uh, good old white Chris right here. That's not racist because he is white and his name is Chris. Okay. But how do you spell my first name? Huh? How do you spell my first name? You know me so well. K R E I S. K R E Z. My mom would be so proud of you. Yeah. Next on the list, we got the one and only Jair. Okay. <laughs> and you guys have been yelling for it. You wanted it. The Allen. Yeah. We got Wiz, Wiz Kid over here. <laughs> have the silent but fearless leader, Iram, right there. <laughs> we can't do anything without <laughs> Jaime. There's Jaime. There's a reason why uh, Jaime's the camera guy, because it's really shaky <laughs> if it's not. We got the Rob Wise. Crap extraordinaire, okay? He helped build these things. He helped install these things. Now he's absolutely ecstatic to do it in the snow. Alan, does the Coca-Cola hit a little different when it's uh, zero <laughs> degrees out? I don't know. It was in the cab with the heat on it, so it's probably about 80 degrees. <laughs> We got the front tracks on, which went pretty smoothly considering. Now we're trying to figure out a nice lift point for the rear because we forgot our block. Oh, nuts. They're just gonna figure that out and then we're gonna get this thing lifted up, get our back wheels off, get our tracks on, and go for a test ride in the meadow over here. Sick. Like uh, we're all tracked up, so now moment of truth. We'll test her out, see how it does. It's gonna be uh, gonna be interesting. Every maiden voyage is always uh, is always a little bit of a surprise. So we've tested a little bit at the shop, but now's the real test. So I think we're a couple minutes away. 